What is going on everybody? Jen Crevasi, Jekyll Bates, and this is probably one of the few times you get to see a day in the life on the spray bench of everything that I do. Technically, you're going to see about half of what I do. This is going to be 60 pieces out of 117 that I'm going to set up and spray. Some of it is going to be in a time-lapse format like you see now because it would literally be like watching paint dry if we ran like six or seven hours into this. So we're going to give you a compiled breakdown. It's going to take about 35 minutes. So if you want to hang out to the end, there's some good tips and tricks in here. Um, and I do bring it out of time lapse for you guys. So there's going to be quite a bit that hopefully I'll be able to teach you in this video. Um, I'm excited about this. It's something that I've done just maybe a couple of times and I'm probably not going to do a bunch of it because it's, um, it's a lot. It's just a very long day. And, um, I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse of this. So I'm going to pull it out of time lapse um, here and there. And one of those is coming up here. So you're going to get a chance to see and listen to what I do in the office. talk through some of this because I don't want to get um, jacked on the I'm listening to the radio or Sirius XM mother. or something yeah, the opening lyrics are dear mother and it's a song you know very very well so what clearly I have too much time on my hands to be playing with flipping paint bottles so this is just a run of things here um, it's showing the setup basically you guys have seen that before and then the entire spray bench and as I go through this, uh, I'm doing just a black back on the spine because I'm going to be doing some metallics, and I think we're going to talk about that. This is about a week or so after I've, I've been in the studio shooting this um, and painting. So you'll see how I go through things and how I set up for a run like this. Um, of various sections of shad. And we should be able to go through quite a bit of why I do what I do and the madness behind the method, as it were. Okay, so I'm kind of at the point where I can talk to you guys. Um, I've got the rest of these that I'm going to do a black over. I just didn't want a regular speed for all the prep stuff. This is the first time you guys are getting a glimpse at a full day's run for me. Um, one of the reasons that I haven't filmed a whole lot is because I just, I do mass volume, um, quite a bit, quite often. Uh, most of it is for bullshit occasionally. It's for another contractor, another company, whether it's crankbaits or special orders or, but we're going into show season. Our drops are picking up. There's a lot of stuff coming. This is up and coming. So this is pretty cool. You guys are actually going to get a chance to see. Um, I think I've got 60 pieces out, which is my average day, depending on the, the complexity of the pattern, is somewhere between 50 and 100 pieces. Um, that's average. I've done as many as 125, 150, but Lord have mercy, that is just crazy, crazy, and I don't like to do that. That's a very long day. This is just three patterns, and they're all shad patterns, so it should go fairly smooth. Um, I want to just do knock these little guys out here with um, with black over, and then because it's, there's going to be a lot of color shift and cool stuff in here, it's going to give you guys a chance to see how I do a run of colors. So, if it's something you guys are interested in doing, there's nothing proprietary about the way I do this. It's just the way I set it up uh, to make it as as efficient as possible for me. I don't. I not not that I don't. I can't do this with bigger baits because they're too heavy for these so I have to do some of that stuff upstairs but anyways this is a glimpse and I'm just gonna kind of shoot shit with you guys as I go through this um, so this I'm just doing a light spray and I've got a little bit of hiss 
only because I just came off of a, a little bit of a break for myself. Um, and I do, I take a little bit of time between layers or between different runs. And I do that so that I don't wear myself out. Um, doing this many baits day after day after day after day um, can get a bit tedious. And, and it can certainly wear your hands out. So I do things like, um, like stretching and ball squeezing and all kinds of stuff. I try to stay active. Um, I lift weights at home. And just smaller weights just so that I keep the dexterity and I keep the muscle mass because I don't want carpal tunnel and then uh, because this is a lot of repetitive motion one of the other things that I'll do um, I do gaming which is a completely different I mean this is pressing but gaming is just like my hands are on the controller or on a keyboard and it just keeps your hands moving that's also a great tip and trick. Uh, and I'm probably not the only gaming nerd out there. I'm probably not as hardcore as, core as some of you guys. And I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm screaming. Um, because I have such a long run set up and I'm moving back and forth. Uh, I have a camera at a specific distance for you guys. So I'm just, I'm not going to probably do a continual shot. Uh, but I am going to do uh, as much as I can in, in one shot. We'll just go through. And I'm probably not going to edit a whole bunch of this because I kind of want you to get a feel for what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So this is, um, this is any given day here at Bullshad. But I just thought that this would be a unique thing. Uh, I think the only other long run I've done has been, um, like, I did a crappie crankbait run, and then I did a long, long time ago when I was still in Arkansas, I did a Rayburn's Revenge. So, you'll notice that I do have the respirator. It's, it's here. Um, and there may be a, a point where I need to go back into a time lapse, especially when I pull out the color shift and, and some of the alcohol ink type stuff that I use. So we'll see. We're going to play by ear as to how this video is going to go. And if you like this kind of content, it's probably not something that I would do all the time. Um, but for specific patterns that really aren't that proprietary or anything crazy like stuff like this, I'm okay with doing it with you guys. Um, it's, not, it's not a huge deal to me. So hopefully you get some value out of this. And if you're thinking about doing something more than you've been doing, this is one way to do it. Uh, the helping hands, there's different weight base of these, or bases, I guess, plural, since I have a bunch of them. Uh, I, have, <laughs> I have 200 of these on this, in this room, on this shelf. I can really only do comfortably 75, and that's, I'm, they're smaller baits, so it's not that, not that hard um, but again bigger baits wouldn't do very well with these helping hands because they're real top heavy but this is this is a pretty good base for this the um, the six inch trick shad is what we're spraying today and I've got a, a bunch of them for a future deal coming up and for the store for the storefront now that we have the, uh, the six inch trick shad out, we've released it. Mike's asked me to start doing some custom colors. So just, just fun. I want you guys to kind of hang out and play along if you want to. But you'll notice, and, and again, some of this might be very tedious and I might go back when I'm editing this and be like, wow, this is boring. You're basically watching paint dry with me. Um, so hopefully it's not boring. Hopefully I can give it some sort of entertainment or educational value for you guys. But, um, yeah, so the helping hands is one way to do it. The way industry does it, at least with crankbaits, is that they'll, they'll run it top to bottom. So they'll have baits hanging that you can rotate on a, a, a top spindle and it's a whole rack of, of uh, several rows of baits. 
So that's usually how the industry does it. And they just connect one bait to another through uh, what I, it's similar to the stuff that I use to hang crankbaits, um, picture wire, or you can use um, like Christmas ornament hangers. That's always fun. And then I'm just, uh, just pulling these into the mix here. So it's going to be three types of shad. And yeah, I guess you guys have noticed uh, there's been an uptick in content on my channel. That's because I've kind of finally figured out the whole time management thing, even with the workload that I have and the obligations that I have. Um, I've just figured out how to do more editing and yeah, I'm sleeping less, but that's okay. Um, but I can do voiceovers at the house. So in my home studio, I can get into a quiet space where I can get some voiceovers done. Um, the only thing that I don't like about that setup at the house is that the, um, the microphone kind of sucks. So the next chance I get, I'm gonna spend a little coin and get a proper studio mic. Uh, the one I have is very old, it's from Arkansas, it's from when I first started doing like up sh updates and spray sessions with you guys. And uh, just just a inexpensive, I don't even think that there's a brand name on it for the microphone. So now we've got the black, and the reason that there's black first is because why? Because of metallics. So black, again, if this is the first video of mine you've ever seen where you're like, wow, it's a whole lot of black there. I normally don't use a lot of black in my painting because it's just too contrasty. But when I'm laying base down for metallics like golds and silvers and bronzes and brasses and things of that nature, uh, really helps in bringing those out. It, it brightens the value of the mica, which is what a lot of these things are made of it's very fine crushed mica so little little tip for the wise so one of the things that I'm thinking about and figuring out in my head which is sometimes dangerous is um, how I'm gonna run this so with three particular styles three colors uh, I know that gold is gonna play into two of the three so those are gonna be down here and then I've got some, some color shift blue that's gonna come into play with this, but no gold, per se. So there's more raw umber. So I'll keep it together. So I've got this particular style, um, which there are 15 of that I'm doing. And then the next style is a 26 piece. And then the next style is another 20. So we'll just kind of keep these, do these last, because it won't use the first color. So I think all, all that through as I'm kind of setting these up, if that makes any sense at all. And hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing down here. Um, it's just a different way to shoot. If I had a camera mounted on the ceiling, it would probably be a little bit easier top down. But unfortunately right now, I do not have that luxury. So I'm just gonna hit a light spray of gold. Do two or three passes. And then move it off to the side. And that's how I do it. That's how it's done. And this is going to pretty much take up the rest of this video. So if there's significant color changes, I will certainly jump back in and talk to you guys about that. But normally, when the cameras aren't rolling, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm just working.
and I just uh, I just kind of walk up and down this bench. I want to make sure that the the layer coats well, and when I run out, I've got my paint nearby. pretty much impossible for me not to use the fan. So what I think I'm going to do, once I get to the, uh, the end of this first set here, is I'm going to throw the mask back on, put you guys back in time lapse, since I've been able to explain. And I, you know, I might do a, a free, like a little intro and kind of explain what's happening in this video as well. Again, I'm thinking out loud as I go through this. But I think that this is something that you guys maybe have been curious about, how I set up stuff, and how I run volume. Because I'm using a lot of air <laughs> and I'm spraying fast and furious, you guys will hear the compressor fire off a bunch. But that's just, I mean, can't help it. All of the uh, plumber's tape in the world can't keep from depleting oxygen out of the tank. But this is a uh, California Air Tools, it's an eight gallon. For those of you that don't know what I use, it is a California Air Tools 8010, I think. So, okay, so that's the last one of this. And then I'm going through, well, I'll just go ahead and go through the gold since I'm moving a little bit closer to the camera. Um, and the airbrushes are Awadas. So I have usually only two running at a time of the HPCS which is the standard Iwata workhorse. I also have a C plus and I have a Micron um, for stuff that hardly ever pertains to the fishing industry. When I get into mixed medium paints and detailing, like real fine detail, or if I'm doing, um, like I, I had a project uh, a few weeks ago that I finished up where it was um, blue bonnet see if I can get that out right. Blue bonnets and then uh, another Hawaiian theme on the other side. So it was Texas and, and Polynesian. And it was a flower theme on a large bait for a customer. And so I get way more detailed with that. And as I run out, I got to make sure that what I use is at an arm's length so I can get to it quickly. And I also have to keep track in my head of how many to do of, of a single pattern. So on this next one, it's 26. So I just have to be mindful of that and keep counting. And when you, when I, or if you do it this way, I usually set up two and one. So I'm counting in groups of threes. So it's three, six, seven, I'm getting ready to do eight. And I just, again, I have to be mindful because my last of three patterns don't have any uh, any gold. But there's also, as I'm thinking this through in my head while I'm talking to you guys, I'm shooting such a volume of paint that the, the only real answer for us all is for me to put my respirator back on because as I'm talking, and spraying, I can feel the difference. And I can't preach it enough. Uh, especially if you're doing long runs, wear that respirator. It's not gonna break the bank to buy one. You can get a half mask like I have here, which, which is a 3M. Um, don't get the knockoff because this is NIOSH rated and you need that, you need something that's, let's say you get sick or you end up with lung problems and you've been wearing a respirator and you're claiming work comp, 
and say you happen to work in an area like I do, um, the the people are going to ask all sorts of questions. Not my people, not Mike or anybody, but um, the the people with suits that generally handle things like that. For me, it would be my insurance company because I have to have one. We'll say, hey, well, did you have a respirator? Yep, I did. Sure did. You wearing it properly? Yes, I was. Is it rated? Oops. If it's a knockoff, it may not be rated. So make sure you get something that's branded. 3M is, is very good. Um, the half mask cost about 40 bucks, and then the cartridges cost about 40 bucks. So you're going to spend $80 to save yourself from lung cancer, COPD, uh, pleurisy, emphysema. All of the things where inhalants can play a really nasty part in your health. So, but just talking to you while I'm spraying, I can feel the difference. So, when this run is done, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 19, I need 20. So, I need 9 more, and then I'll put the rest where you're back on. And we'll go back into time lapse. Um, but the way this is working is that. Uh, I go through one color at a time and do all the applicable things in the run. Because it just makes sense and it's much more efficient for me. For me. Maybe you guys have a different way of doing it. Maybe you're thinking about doing it. Hoping you guys are doing well today. Um, it is Gosh, what day is this? I want to say it's uh, Monday, Monday afternoon. And everybody has left for the day. And they let me stay in this place by myself. <laughs> so let's count again. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. Two more pieces. And 26. And I'll stop the camera again. I'm not sure if I'm going to go into... I'm not sure if I'm going to go into a time lapse or not because I want you guys to actually see what I'm doing. I do have the camera down here at an angle that may not be conducive to the other end of the bench because I have to kind of walk back and forth. But the whole gist of it is one color at a time. Sometimes if it's details, one side at a time and then flip it. Um, and that's just the most efficient. It's like an assembly line. It's production. So we are back in time lapse. And this is me. This is Jen in the future. Um, cutting back into this video. So I'm using some detail raw umber and now you're starting to see the third pattern. I have moved the camera to where you're just kind of looking at this with me. And these are all shad pattern. So I'm going to kind of run through this, do a little background music in here. And we're about 10 minutes away from the end of this video. And I'm starting to notice some cobwebs that I need to clean out <laughs> from underneath. So I am spraying a little bit of, um, it's like a blue hue. And it is the Mission Models, I think it's called Color Change Blue. And it's pretty cool. It's a very light blue, shimmery kind of a... It's not a color shift. It's just your every ordinary, everyday... Um, like a mica, like most of the shifters are, but they're shift. So this is just a single color. And now we've got some of the, um, the Vallejo, and this is a shift. This is the deep tin green. So there's a few things going on here that I'll come out. Sorry, got okay. distracted. Here we go. I have pulled the camera off time lapse because I'm going to show you a cool little trick. 
If you guys are still playing along with the video at this point, I'm dropping this berry in it in the middle of the video. So you actually have to watch it to get the tip. If you're watching this, let me know in the comments below what you think of this little tip. This is a fun one. I don't think that I've ever shown you this before, but it's fun and it's effective. And it's gonna use airbrush medium and some pink generic mica, nothing more. So this is a brand new golden airbrush medium. Usually comes with a little seal. You wanna go ahead and pull that off. And make sure when you pull these things off that there's no excess that stays around or eventually it will get in the, it'll dry rot and whatnot and fall into the liquid. And then eventually it'll get trapped into your airbrush. So this is pretty cool. If you haven't done it before, maybe you've done it before. If you guys have been airbrushing a while and you're like, yes, nothing new. Um, cool, cool. I'm glad that you guys know the tip. Um, I've been doing it for a while. I just, I don't normally give out tips and tricks, but this one, um, this one's fun. And I'm not going to get in any trouble for saying stuff because it's just regular old mica, regular old airbrush medium. But basically, instead of spraying dry powder on there, you're just giving it a medium so that you can spray it. And um, to do this, I'm just taking a paintbrush that's dry and I'm scooping about that much, dropping that right into the uh, maybe one more, a little bit less dropping that right into this little cup and then so that I don't spill it or do something crazy because I am known for being clumsy after I've been working for eight hours or so. I think, when did I get here? I got here at nine. It's six, so not quite 12 hours. Nine hours I think I've been here today. Um, but then you're going to just drop, I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. You're just going to drop some airbrush medium into that and it's fairly transparent. And then you take that good old trusty paintbrush and you just stir it around and stir it and stir it and stir it. Get all the clumps out, get it to where, cause it's super thin mica. It's very finely crushed mica powder. Um, some people use this for nails and whatnot. So it's been around, it's been on the market for a while. It's also used in mixed media painting and it's used in acrylic pouring and epoxy resins. I mean, it's just, it's used for a lot of different things. But this airbrush medium just gives it a home so that you can shoot it through an airbrush and that's what it looks like. It's very thin, it's very transparent, but it's very pretty. And you don't need it too thick just a little bit and then we're going to apply it on the belly of this particular group of baits and it makes it almost like a it turns white into like a pinkish bone which is really really cool I like it let's see what you guys think about it now before this hardens up and it will eventually um, it'll get harder uh, and put it like these little jello shooter cups are great because you can cap it and keep it fresh and reuse it so just food for thought but then as you're spraying this it just gives a really nice pink sheen to the bait gives it that natural pinkish bone color on the belly which is I like it I mean if you guys think it's worthy try it out um, I'll drop a link for where you can get the mica and the airbrush medium you can pick the airbrush medium up like at Blix or probably Amazon but I'll uh, I'll leave you some links 
and then I'm just giving it a, a gentle pass here. One thing that you need to do when you start getting into this kind of stuff is that you need to give it time to dry in between layering. If you don't do that, then you're just going to have a big muddy mess, almost like oil paint. It's going to mush up on you and you do not want that. So once you're finished spraying it, give this on a normal day with like fairly middle of the road, like 50 to 60% humidity, which is everywhere, USA. Um, give it a good 15, 20 minutes. Just kind of chill out and get happy and dry before you apply the next layer. So I wanted to do this on camera before I jump back into the rest of the baits because um, I need this to just kind of chill and hang out uh, over on this side of the bench. So that's my little tip trick. Snuck it into the middle of the video. And this is a long one. I know it's longer than I normally go, but there's, you know, it's a run. It takes me, so I don't know how long this is going to be once I edit it down. I'm sure I'll edit some of it out and whatnot, but um, to go through 60 baits, three different patterns, it takes me about four hours. And that is not including the prep time. So by prep, I mean I got to sand the bait, I got to prime the bait, I got to let the, the primer, the self etching primer, gas out, which means it just needs to dry naturally. I don't bake it, I just hang it, forget about it for a day. And then the next day I come in and it's paint ready. And self etching primer is key also because you don't want stuff that doesn't want to. Resin doesn't normally like paint. Um, that's why you really want to do an adhesion assistant like a self etching primer on resin baits. That's the other it. It. <laughs> that is the other tip and trick for this. So just to show you, I don't know if the camera is able to do justice to the really pretty pink belly that this has now. But there it is. So I'm cutting back in and going through some of the rest of the patterns and I think that that's going to take just a few minutes. I think this entire video is just like maybe a couple more minutes long. If you've enjoyed this, please drop me a comment below if you've made it to this point in the video. Say, hey Jen. Um, and I really appreciate you guys watching. So we're going to take it out with a little bit of music and have some fun. So I did three patterns on this. I believe I'm going to get the chance to show some of this stuff to you in a future workshop update. Because I know some of these, now that I'm going back and editing, some of these dropped. Um, I don't know how many they dropped or what the quantities are. That's out of my... I, I leave the bullshad business side to the bullshad guys. Um, and I just do the customs and the paints and do cool stuff like this and teach you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed hanging out with you guys as usual. And... I will see you on the next video. Let's roll it out and I will see you soon. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.
So it's really loud in here. It is now the next day. Um, I stayed late and clear coated, got everything finished, and we will be at the point soon where I will be doing tail assembly and eyes and all that good stuff. But just to give you an idea of one day's worth of work, and that's not all the work that I did. So I also prepped another bunch of baits. And while I am not going to show you all of the process in this room, because some of it is proprietary, I will let you know that there is full Tyvek and a massive full face respirator and this monster fan, which is super loud. Um, so this is the clear coat room. And I think this is probably the first time that you guys have seen like full run. So this was sanded and then primed and then painted and then cleared. And then this was sanded and then primed. So this will be the next next batch of baits. Um, and again, we're going into show season, so there's always the demand for more stuff. So I hope that I've been able to give you guys a little bit more of a glimpse on how things actually happen here at, um, at a full production clear coat room, studio, shop, and I will catch you guys on the next video. I need to put tails on these and go home and spend some time in my backyard with my feet up. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates at Bullshad Studios. Almost forgot to show you. This is a black dark chrome style. Clear coated. Look at how shiny, 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 shiny. I can see the details of myself and the cell phone and all that groovy stuff. And it's just, uh, this one is probably not going to come out for a very long time, if ever. Um, girls got to have some secrets. And also the kind folks that helped me along the way um, have asked that I not divulge all the secrets. So I will honor that. But these are just so cool. So there's two things that I do. This is the darker of the two. I also do like a pure chrome, silver plating kind of deal. Um, this is just, if you want a black chrome style for those low light fishing missions, this is fun, folks. It is fun. So, again, it took me months and months and months and months to master it. But I thought that you should, you should see it. There it is.